Hello and welcome to Mark's Tech Talk. In this video we're going to see how to construct block diagrams in AutoCAD. We'll be using AutoCAD 2019 and let's go to a uh, blank drawing. So this is how you would start out in AutoCAD. Uh, and first thing we're going to do is we're going to use what's called the snap function. Snap function makes it easier to be sure all of your lines are exactly horizontal or vertical. So I turned on snap by clicking this uh, second button uh, down on the lower right of the screen here. It looks like a grid of dots. It's now highlighted blue. That indicates the snap function is turned on. Now, uh, first thing that we're going to do, if you uh, saw my previous video, I gave you a procedure for constructing block diagrams. And the first thing I asked you to do is select the title uh, that uh, of all the blocks that you have, the title that has the most letters. Uh, so let's really use an example of uh, power amp as being the title of a block that has the most letters in a block diagram. So I'm going to enter that text, and I do that with the text command. I simply type in, I don't have to put the cursor any particular place, I just type in text, T-E-X-T, -E and then hit enter. And uh, following the prompts on your screen, uh, always look at the very bottom of your window there. It says specify the start point. This is where you want the text to appear on your screen. It should be the lower left of where you want the text to appear. So this, this will be the bottom of the left-hand edge of the text. So I'm going to start it right here in the middle of the screen. I'll just click there. And then uh, once we do that, the next thing it asks is what is the height? I'll use the default value of 0.2, so I just hit enter. And then uh, what is the rotation? Again, default value is zero, so I just hit enter. And then it wants me to simply start typing the text. So I'm going to type in power amp. Okay, and hit enter twice, and there is power amp on my screen. It's rather difficult to see that because the default height of the text was only 0.2. But if I zoom in, and I'm going to zoom, uh, uh, there's actually a couple different ways. One easy way is to just use the wheel on your mouse. Most uh, of your mouse your mice have a little wheel between the left and right buttons. If you use that wheel, you can zoom. Now, the problem I have is if I start zooming too much, it goes off screen. So if I right click, I can choose pan. And that gives me a little hand icon that I can click and slide the screen around to recenter the text. And staying in the pan command, I can use that wheel again to zoom some more. So there is uh, the title, and uh, it's centered in the screen. I can read it fairly well. So I'm going to get out of the pan command by hitting the escape button. So I'm back to my crosshair cursor. Now the next thing we want to do, uh, since we've selected the title with the most letters, is to now draw my block around that. Remember, my block will simply be the um, uh, rectangle, okay? So I'm going to choose a rectangle uh, by going in the draw uh, area on the upper left of your screen. And there's a button there. It's uh, the top one of the small buttons there. And that's the rectangle command. So I click on rectangle, and then I can uh, click on two corners to specify my rectangle. So I can click, for example, here, and then uh, uh, maybe, uh, let's say, right here. Okay, uh, that would be a nice uh, block size. And it allows me to fit my entire, entire title within the block. No letters go outside of the block. And since I chose the title that has the most letters, all the other titles that I will utilize uh, should also fit within that rectangle using the same size text. So uh, let's take a look at um, uh, how we can now um, add some more blocks to our block diagram. Uh, one of the rules I've told you about in a previous video is that all of the blocks should be the same size. Well, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit, 
and I'm going to create another block of the same size. Now the easiest way to make sure I get exactly the same size is to simply copy that block. So I use the copy command and then it uh, on the bottom it says select objects I want to copy. Okay, look at the prompt at the bottom of your screen, select objects. So I click on the rectangle. That's highlighted. Okay, I'm done selecting objects. That's the only thing I want to copy. I'm not going to copy the text, just the rectangle. So I right click and then it says specify the base point. That's kind of where you grab a hold of this. Uh, I usually choose the lower left. So I click on the lower left of the rectangle and then it says specify second point. That's basically where I want to copy the rectangle to. So I'll put another one right under that one. And then maybe I'll put another one, um, maybe to the left here, but you know what? I want to really center it there, and I can't quite center it. So I'm going to kind of uh, get out of this by hitting Escape, and I'm going to adjust my snap to a smaller value so I can get a little bit more detail here uh, than I had uh, the way it is right now. So I type in Snap, S-N-A-P, and hit Enter. And I see my default value on the bottom of the screen is 0.5. So I'm going to enter 0.25. Now, whenever you want more detail, you just reduce this number. But um, my suggestion is, and you're going to get a lot of trouble if you don't follow this, is whenever you reduce the value of snap, always cut it in half. So 0.5, half of 0.5 is 0.25. So 0.25, enter. Now my snap is set to 0.25. Every time I adjust snap to a lower value, always reduce it by half. Um, if I don't do that, I may have some trouble down the line. Uh, let me try now entering uh, another uh, uh, rectangle, another block. So I'm going to do this copy command one more time. I'm going to select the rectangle and right click. I'm done selecting. Choose the point at which I'm going to grab it, okay, and then the new point where I want the rectangle, and I'm going to put a rectangle right there, and that centers it uh, vertically compared to the other blocks, and I can do that again, let's say, for example, right here. You know what, I think this one, I'm going to come down uh, maybe even with the uh, lower power amp there, and I'm going to do another one there. And another one I'm going to do even with the top power amp. And I'm going to do one more, uh, let's say right here, to illustrate this. I'm all done, I'll hit escape. All right, now, uh, what this will allow me to do is to show you how to interconnect these right now to show the signal flow. So we're going to do that with arrows. And I'm going to start out with the line portion of the arrow. So I click on the line command. That's the very first button in the draw area on the upper left of your screen. I click on line and I'm going to try to connect to my blocks. And I'm having a little bit of trouble because I can't quite get a line position that doesn't go to the corner. See if I, uh, for example, go right here and I go straight across with that, I've connected to the corner of my block. And that's a no-no if you uh, watch my video on the rules of block diagrams. I cannot go to a corner. So I'm going to click on this counterclockwise arrow to undo that. And I'm going to adjust my snap to a still lower value. I'm going to type in snap, enter, and one half of 0.25 is 0.125. So now I have more ability to select exactly where I want that line. So let's try that again. Line and come down just a little bit and go straight across. And there we go. I'll hit escape to get out of the line command. Let me do that again uh, on the next uh, block here. Up a little bit. And there we go. Straight across. And there I don't have any um, problem going right to the blocks um, with that not hitting the corner. Um, if we want, and I'm going to do this uh, not because I have to, but I want to illustrate what you can do if you want to. 
uh, I can use the move command and I can bump these a little bit closer uh, together. See, I don't necessarily have to have them uh, as far apart as I did. So I select my object once I hit the move command. Just like the copy command, I'm going to specify base point. And then where do I want the block to be? And I'm going to move it up a half a block. And I'm going to move uh, the upper one down half a block. So I select objects. I right click. I choose the lower left and slide it down a half of a small block in AutoCAD. Okay. Uh, and I can do the same thing using that move command again to move these up and get them a bit closer together. And again, I could have. Uh, uh, you know, place this the, uh, exactly where I want it to begin with. But I want to illustrate how you can make changes if you want. And I actually bumped that too soon. I want to do move, and then I want to select the block. And right-click on it, choose the base point, move it down, uh, and there we go. And then I can do the same thing again. I'm going to move this block down just a little bit. Um, and I think I want it, let's say right there. Yeah, it looks like it's good spacing there. Okay. Uh, now we can draw some additional interconnect lines here uh, to show how that signal is going to interconnect. And let me do that one more time. Let's say right here. And I'm just clicking on the beginning and end point of the line. And to get out of line command, I'm hitting the escape button. Okay, and let me see uh, one more uh, one more line here. I want the line to go from the center of the block, which I believe is going to be, let me see here. I believe that will be right there. And I want to go to the center of this block. Uh, so I want to go right there and extend it down to right here. And I believe that's going to be the center of the blocks. I might be out. Yeah, I'll check them out just a little bit. Uh, right, let me just do that again here. Uh, let me do that line command again. Let me try going from this way. Maybe I'll get better luck. And uh, right through there. And then... Oh, I still didn't do it. Let me go up a little higher. All right there, I think is halfway. Okay. Yeah, that looks like I got halfway. All right. So the next thing we wanted to do is to add some arrows here. Now, we can do a simple arrow by simply using the line command and clicking, uh, you know, the line in order to produce an arrow to look like this. And uh, that's okay, but I think I really would prefer a kind of a filled-in arrow there. So instead of using the line command, I'm going to choose a command called solid, S-O-L-I-D. Okay, hit enter, and then it says to specify the points I want. So I'll click on those same three points, and once I click the three points, I right-click, and it fills in the arrow. Uh, I have to right click to say I'm done because normally the solid command is looking for four points to choose a rectangle, but we only want a triangle. So we hit the uh, enter, which is the right button on the mouse to tell it, okay, I'm done after three. Let me do the same thing uh, again, but you know what? I want the exact same kind of arrow. So I'm going to hit escape and I'm going to say copy. And I'm going to select the arrow. Okay. Um, let me see if I can get it. Um, I think I've got it. Uh, base point right here. And there it is. There's my arrow. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to just stick it right here uh, for the moment and hit escape. And next thing I want to do is rotate it. So I'm going to choose the rotate command, select this object, and uh, right click. I'm done selecting. Specify the base point of rotation. I'll just use the point of the arrow. 
and then I can rotate it 90 degrees or minus 90 or I can just select it with the uh, cursor and uh, um, looks like I didn't do that correctly let me do that one more time uh, rotate select object and uh, base point and let's say I want that to be um, 90 degrees okay there we go all right now that I have it rotated it's easy to move it into position uh, matter of fact I'm not even going to do a move I'm going to do a copy command I'm going to say copy you know select the arrow I'm done selecting so I specify the base point I'll choose the tip of the arrow and then uh, where do I want to put it I'll just place it at the locations that I need arrows okay and there they are so I'm done um, almost done here the only other thing we want to do is we want to delete this we can highlight it and just hit the delete button and there is a um, block diagram and we may have other uh, titles to go in here uh, as an example maybe we want to enter text text enter specify the starting point so maybe i'm going to put the starting point let's say oh uh, maybe right here uh, uh this is going to be a short title i'm just going to put mp3 so maybe i'll put it right here and i'm going to now say default uh enter for height and default rotation zero sit so enter and then type in the text mp3 um, mp3 and enter enter there we go all right and uh, maybe we want another title so we type in text again and hit enter uh, start point maybe I'll choose a start point let's say right here and uh, Height again is 0.2, so I just hit enter. Rotation is zero, just hit enter and start typing my text. Okay, and enter twice. There is my text. So you get the idea of how you can now construct a block diagram. We've gone through quite a number of commands. We've looked at the text command, uh, we've looked at the rectangle command. Uh, we did move and copy, uh, and we also did the solid command. And using these commands, you should be able to construct any kind of block diagram that you want. Once you're all done, remember to review this to make sure your block diagram follows all the rules. For example, your signal flow is from left to right, and uh, it can go from top to bottom if needed. All of your signal exits blocks on the right hand side uh, and it enters blocks on the left hand side or the top. And we try to have as much symmetry as we can. So our distance here and our distance here is the same. Uh, distance here and distance here is the same. Distance horizontally between these blocks is the same as this distance horizontally. So you try to make things as symmetric as possible, as consistent as possible. You want your finished block diagram to look professional, and you should be able to do that pretty easily using all the tools in AutoCAD. So um, that should give you enough uh, information in order for you to construct your block diagrams. So I hope you enjoyed this edition of Mark's Tech Talk, and stay tuned for more.